Hi, Terry Bolt here with our weekly video for our tech writing class. Uh, so this week, uh, you're, I'll, I'll, you're going to be working on your proposal. Um, so I've posted all of the Red Team reviews. Um, you each should have gotten them in the grader, but I posted them all here uh, in case you want to look through the, the reviews for both teams, um, or, and actually for all of them, in case you just want to learn more about it. Uh, you'll notice that my reviews were a little bit more uh, detailed and a lot longer than, than many of yours. Uh, I'm not going to go through, through them here, but um, one of the things that's important, and I ended up putting these links down here, many of you had not, if you had gone through them, you missed stuff. If you had not gone through them, that was part of the problem. Uh, you had not, the, the, many of the draft proposals were severely lacking in meeting NSF's criterions. Uh, you have to have things on uh, intellectual merit and uh, broader impacts. You have a one-page summary uh, that has to have those sections, and then your main proposals should have those sections as well. Another high-level comment that many people struggled with was that you had references, but they were like web URLs, whatever. You need to have academic references. Intellectual merit is what is the, the fundamental research you're doing that's going to be valuable to other people doing related projects in the future? So you have to talk a little bit about what other people have done, how that's related to what you're going to do, and then how you're going to transition that into the field, uh, what, in, in the field of knowledge when things are done. So you need to see a little bit of that in your, in your proposals. Um, and that's what I, when I'm talking about references, that's what I'm looking for. Many of you were also not, uh, didn't have formal like MLA or, or formal citation styles. You need, would need to get that in. So just to make that simpler, I put the overall NSF proposal preparation guidelines. It talks about all of what has to be in NSF. Uh, a couple of you are working on what are called planning proposals. Uh, and if you're working on a planning proposal, then there's a separate set of sub, sub piece of the guidelines, but I pulled it out here just to make that easier for you to find. Uh, but what goes into those planning proposals? Uh, if you're doing an ASL Type 3, that's not actually considered a planning proposal. For each of the, the, type, the proposals you're working on, right, I have the actual calls for proposals. One of the things you want to do when you're working on your proposal, uh, and a couple of you did, but not all of you did, go through, pull out, here's what you have to have, make the te proposal template, which we've talked about before. Building that proposal template uh, based on what's in your call plus what's in these guides, right, you want to go through your checklist and make sure all of that stuff is in there. Um, I, I, looking back, I, I may have overestimated uh, many of your uh, abilities and experiences. Um, I thought you would actually be able to read the instructions and, and figure those things out. Uh, so I didn't tell you exactly what steps you have to do. I'm trying to act a little bit more like I would have with employees in my company. Uh, so I, I was pretty generous in the grading. Don't take that to reflect that your proposal's in good shape. I graded a lot of the points for the, the current version based on the effort people seem to have put in. A couple of teams, it was pretty clear you were not putting in the level of effort, but for most of the teams, you got a lot of points just for having worked through it. Um, from a process point of view, um, I had a recommended that you actually break up into individuals um, where you're not necessarily all doing everything at once. A couple of teams in their journals talk about you know, getting together for five hours of calls. That's great for parts of the process, but it's not the most efficient uh, proposal team effort side. On the other hand, this is also a class where you're learning and you might have learned more by doing that. So I wasn't quite as aggressive on taking off for, for the teams that only had a part of their proposal. Your goal for this week, you have, oh, sorry, I didn't want to do that. Back. Um, your assignments for this week are two, twofold. So the first is, uh, no, I closed the line. Um, proposal body revision. So you're going to take the, the peer reviews plus my reviews. Uh, anytime they conflict, go pretty much go with what I said, but you can also ask questions. Uh, if you have any questions on what I said in your team feedback, send me email. I have a lot of free time today. Uh, Tuesday, I have office hours, both in the morning and the afternoon. Don't wait until later in the week. Even if your whole team can't together, if only one or two of you want to get together, uh, if you as a person have a question, you don't have to wait for the rest of your team. Send me email. We'll schedule something and get together and make sure we can go over what what has that what wouldn't know what was missing. Um, there, there were some good points though in the peer reviews. So again, you know, look at those. They, they definitely had value for you. Uh, your final proposal is really due in two weeks, um, but the last week should really just be editing and polishing. I don't expect you to be adding content next week. Uh, so this week is your week to fill fill this in. So I was going to have an, an assignment on, on doing speeches. I'll push that off for a week uh, because these needed a lot more work than I was 
hoping that would happen. Um, and so this week you're going to basically generate your second draft, which should be your final draft, but not your final proposal. Um, it should have all of the required content and all the required sections, right? So I sh next review, which I'll do next weekend, I shouldn't be seeing you're missing this, you're missing it. You need to put those in. I made this a little bit more explicit. You should have a one-page proposal summary. That's the first page, the sort of cover page that goes with it. That has to have an overview, a section on intellectual merit, and a section on broader impact. The proposal body should also have all the required contents, depending on what, again, what proposal type you have. There might be that you have to have this kind of element, a plan, and almost all in this for work requires some level of an evaluation plan. Um, but you might have to have other subsections. Whatever it is, right, you should clearly state what your proposal type is, go through the guide, make sure you have all those parts in there. Um, you should have supporting evidence for your intellectual merit. The word, when, when a proposal, call for proposal says you should have certain things, those words should show up in your proposal multiple times so that reviewers can quickly find them in case they were going back for a quick review to check stuff. Um, so you should have the words broader impact and intellectual merit in your proposal body as section headers, but maybe even in paragraphs when you go to work on it. Um, so you should be, when you're doing your intellectual merit, part of that should include academic style references to the literature to show support ideas that are out there and why. Uh, when, when, when effort is made, there will be, you know, who else is going to learn from this when you guys are done? That's what, part of what intellectual merit should do. There can be a creative idea. Many proposals had a good creative idea, but you didn't follow up. You didn't look to see how's it related to other people in the literature, how is it Gonna, you know, going to be transitioned, and how are you going to evaluate it? If you have intellectual merit, you probably have to measure what's going on. Broader impacts are a little bit easier to measure, but you need to talk about those. Um, I'm also going to ask, and, and I had talked, we've talked about proposals before, uh, and I thought I actually had this in the earlier assignments. I want to see one to two figures with captions, and now I'm going to be a little bit more explicit. One of those key figures should highlight the key proposal idea, um, and that the key proposal idea could be either be broader impact or intellectual merit, but whatever the, you have for the key proposal idea, you should have one other uh, figure that helps describe the other aspect, intellectual merit or broader. You're welcome to have more figures. If you're trying to fill eight pages and you don't have a lot of content, figures are a great way to quickly tell a story that the reader can understand and, and add some of that filler space if you need to. Uh, when proposals say you, should, you can use at most eight pages, they also really mean you should use at least eight pages. You should fill them up, even if it just takes a big figure to help tell that story. Um, each proposal should, because it's one of the NSF expectations, you're going to have a short timeline with milestones for the project implementation. Here's what we're going to do when. For those who are working on a planning proposal or an ASL Type 3, that should have a timeline of when you're going to meet with partners, how you're going to do things, um, and, and how you're going to measure progress with respect to those. They want to see that you've done the planning. Um, we're, again, not asking you uh, to, to talk about a timeline for finishing the proposal. That's your timeline. I asked you to do that before because I wanted you to be thinking about how much work there was to do, who was doing what. This is just in the proposal. There should be a short timeline. Often it's just a Gantt chart, you know, three or four lines high uh, from Excel showing the various key aspects of the project, laying out some of that timeline elements. Uh, so, again, that's your, your main assignment for this week. The second assignment um, is continuing a little bit on our business communication side from last week. Uh, we're going to be doing a revision journal. So part of this is, again, it's an me email message to your manager. Some of you had good messages to your manager. Some of you, you need to learn to write better messages to your manager. I put comments in for many of you about your message being too long last week. This week, that's not going to be a problem. Uh, most managers don't want to, if they ask you for a short, like what happened, what, you know, they're not asking for a long uh, thing. If you felt you were being challenged, like I'm not saying you're working, that was not my goal this last week. It's not actually my goal this week, right? Um, I can, by the combination of, of the documents, who said what and what I see on Teams, I get a pretty good idea who's doing what kind of stuff. Uh, but if you want to defend yourself a little bit, that's fine. When you're writing about teamwork to your uh, manager, you generally want to make sure you have both the team and yourself in there, not just one of you. Um, so this week, you're going to sort of first you're going to summarize the changes your team made and your role in that process. So that's just a quick status part. Then I want to see two to three sentences about your learning from the review and revision process and recommendations for the, how the course might improve on this learning in the next iteration. If this is really one of the things I've done with my company, what do we do uh, po post-action reviews? 
and mid-action reviews, is I ask about the process that we're doing and how I as a boss might improve and how the teams might improve. So this is a slight variation of that. Really, I want to understand how I'm doing in the class uh, and how I might improve that for the future. But you're writing this as though you know, you're know you writing to a manager. The second part, uh, I want to, uh, it should contain a 360 review. This is a term used uh, frequently in the industry, which is really everyone reviewing everyone. So I want to have one uh, review per team member, including you reviewing yourself. Each review should have a short summary of the strengths, weaknesses of the team member by name, and what do you think that contributed in the overall process, not just this last week, but over the whole time you've been working on this project. So this is a summary review. It's not very long, but when you have you know, three or four team members, it's going to take a little bit uh, because I'm asking for more information. Even though I you know, critiqued people last time for, for being a little bit long-winded, I do actually expect this would be a uh, letter would be if it was you know, in a Word document, one to two pages, um, and it's a letter to the manager. It should be professionally oriented. It should go through spell checking and grammar, all of the things you would do if you were sending something off to your boss. Uh, for those of you who have really great bosses in a very informal uh, relationship, that's great. Most managers are not in that category. Uh, so even if that's what you think of a manager, view this as you're writing in a more formal business tone to those people. And again, it's an internal memo, it's an email, right? I need to, I want to see the subject line, the ending, all of this stuff that I expected it. Some of you did really well at that, so this is trivial, but for some of you, uh, you your last week's uh, messages were not uh, professional enough, so I wanted to revise this as a way of, of pushing that a little bit farther and, and getting things uh, to, to get going. Um, I will actually be posting some content later this week about editing and about uh, oral presentation, which will be your your other final presentation. So when I talked about next week, you're just going to be doing some editing. One of the reasons for that is you're going to have another assignment while you're polishing, because polishing often takes, you know, you got to iterate with people, it takes a little bit of time. It's good to actually let it set for a day or two and then come back. There's going to be a, a, a talk presentation next week as well, so you're not going to have as much time. Um, the editing stuff will be helpful as you get towards polishing. I didn't want to put it out now because f maybe except for one team where it's more a little bit of polishing, most of you have too much writing to do, so I didn't want you. I need you to get the content in, and then we can get to rewriting. So we'll, we'll get to that later in the week. I'll post a video. Uh, there, there's not going to be a separate explicit editing assignment because your final proof uh, of your proposal will be such editing. Um, so the last thing, and I'm going I'm to go back and, and make sure I update the proposal body revisions assignment because uh, that was one of the things I wanted to do, and I forgot to edit it before I showed it to you. Um, I want this week's to be done in some sort of group team editor, Microsoft Teams with tra change tracking, uh, Google, Google with change tracking. Um, one of the things you're going to turn in when you go to turn your bo uh, proposal body revisions is you're going to turn in a clean version of the document and a document showing all the changes since last week. That makes it a little bit easier for me to see what changes are happening. Uh, and it's actually not uncommon when you're doing red team reviews to give the red team, here's the the the, 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 the revised version, and here's all the changes because it makes it easier to go see what changes were actually done, not just looking at the document and got to reread the whole thing. In this case, I want to see both because that's, a, that's part of the practice. So uh, I will make sure I revise that before I, before I make it live in just a couple of minutes. So, again, if you have questions, reach out. I have lots of time today. Uh, I will have some time Tuesday, Wednesday I will be out, um, and if I need to meet on Thursday. But Thursday is getting a little late. You really want to meet today or tomorrow if you have questions. So Read through your views, read through your feedback, and uh, ask questions. Email is great. We can do phone calls or Teams or whatever. Uh, you don't have to try and schedule something on Teams today if you want to just reach out and call. Uh, and if I don't answer, just tell me what time you can meet, but just try, try reaching out. I'll be working in my office in the lab today. I have a bunch of paperwork to do. So. Um, again, my, my reviews might come across as slightly uh, aggressive. Right? That's my style when I'm reviewing. Right? I try to do a little bit of bad news so much and comment on you who did, did a good bit good, bad news sandwich. There's some good comments for each of you strengths, then there's some weaknesses and things to fix. Um, I, I see a lot of progress in this class. I see a lot of you having advanced farther from where you were, uh, but I still set the goal to where we need to be, and so you'll, 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 I'll be pushing you towards that goal. Um, there's only a few of you who are actually in danger of not having good grades in this class, and I think those people know who they are. Uh, and for two of the teams doing BPE, uh, check your email. There's some special things for you guys to address. Thanks. Talk to you next week.